Moving right along, uh, we're going to apply the concept of conservation momentum in the case of collision. So two things coming together, hitting each other, and we'll see what happens. And this we apply the same thing, but because there's two bodies, we will put this sigma sign on to, to imply that there's more than one momentum in the beginning time because there's two separate bodies. And then that relates to the final total momentum as well. All in the middle, you have the change in momentum, which is your impulse given by any forces, but not just any forces, it has to be specifically external forces. So when the two car comes together, they hit each other, but that wouldn't be considered an external force. And in such cases, there's no external force in the X direction because any friction would be very small compared to the collision force, so we can ignore it. So that means this middle term goes away and our calculation becomes quite a bit easier. And that's a big appeal of applying conservation momentum in the case of collision, where the external forces are very small and so we can ignore them. Like always, let's draw a lovely picture of time one and time two. In this case, we have a train car going in the quote-unquote positive direction. So let's define this to be positive x. We're once again not going to care about the y. We'll call this car A instead of calling it 1 because we use time 1 and 2. So we'll use car A and B. Car B having a different mass, as you see, but it also goes has a velocity in the negative direction of negative 0.120 meters per second. And then later on in time two, the two cars are now stuck together because they are, as they say, coupled, and they travel together at the same speed, which we don't know. But we're gonna assume that it's gonna end up traveling that way for now. So this is assumed. If after our calculation, it works out that it's a negative number, we know it goes the other way. So generally we assume that it goes in a positive direction. We can also summarize our information in the little chart that we have VA and VB for time one and time two. Because there's two bodies, there's a little more things to keep track of. You start at 0.3 meter per second and negative 1.2 meter per second. And then at the end, they both go at whatever this V2 is. So now that I have all the information collected, let's put it together in my sum of momentum before and after. So for each of the cases, we have two different masses. So we have M1, VA1, which is a vector, plus MB, VB1. Now, I remind you again, subscripts become very important once we deal with these things because we have two times and two objects, at least, in many of these cases. So having the right subscript will help you keep track of which mass to use, which velocity to plug in, so on and so forth. In this case, both of the two final velocity are just V2, so we can rewrite this as something like that. The V2 factors out, or you can think of, in the end, you have one single body lumped together going at that particular speed. And that's what we're actually looking for is v2 so we can divide this to the bottom that's a one keeping the vector sign so that we can use the negative sign properly running a bit low on space there big heavy car and that's where the negative comes in if you get the sign wrong it's going to throw everything out of whack and with enough calculator work, you will find that you get that as an answer. So the final velocity is 1.2 meters second in the positive x, whatever that means. So we'll go with that. And so again, in these kind of collision problems, the external forces are often small compared to the forces that are involved in the actual collision. So we can drop the external impulse term and just relate the initial momentum to the final momentum. In this case, the two total momentum would stay constant and the same, given that there's no external forces.